Hi, my name is Kate, and you are very welcome here on my channel where I talk about fragrances. Please don't forget, if you like my videos, if you enjoy watching them, uh, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, to subscribe, and to hit notification bell so you can get notified when a new video is coming. And now, get cozy, pour yourself some hot tea or coffee or maybe even wine, and let's start talking about Nicolai Parfumeur Créateur. This is actually the brand that I'm so excited to tell you about because I fell in love with it in June. I went to Paris and it was actually on my map and one of the goals for the trip to get to Nicolai Boutique uh, because I heard a lot about these fragrances, that they're amazing. But here in New York, it's not so easy to find the variety of them. There are only like two or three that I managed to find. Uh, and I wanted to see more of them. So, voila. Yeah, I think also the story of the brand is interesting because Patricia de Nicolai, she's actually an heir of Guerlain family. But as I understand, the old man Guerlain decided that the brand will not go to the woman, that she will not become the head of the brand. And hmm, <laughs> that's actually unfortunate. But no, I would say the opposite. It's very fortunate because she had the freedom to create her own brand and absolutely have the creative freedom and do whatever she wants. At the same time, uh, the modern Guerlain, the today's Guerlain, I, I cannot say I'm super thrilled about it. I don't think that there is anything very legendary, I would say, that they're doing now. It's not as interesting, maybe. Or maybe I'm just skeptical. I don't know. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think about Guerlain today? I'm really curious what you think because I'm a little confused with this brand. Now when it's owned by a bigger company, I'm not sure it's going the best direction as it happens a lot, unfortunately, now. So let me know what you think. Let's talk about this. About Nicolai fragrances. Um, first, Patricia made me fall in love with citruses. Before I discovered this brand, I didn't really, I wasn't thrilled about citruses, to be honest. I kind of thought it's the cheapest materials and you overpay for the brand in most cases. And I don't know, just it was not my thing, but she managed to change my mind. Let's begin with the very fragrance that started that transformation in my mind. It's Eau Yuzu. Beautiful, beautiful yuzu with uh, lemon leaves, with grapefruit, juniper, patchouli, maybe some wood. It's incredible. It's spiky. Um, it's very sour in a best way, in a kind of a grapefruit sourness. I'm not sure I actually smell the real yuzu fruit, but it's just incredible. And it's so pleasant. And all these fragrances, they're so easy to wear. Um, I just, you will see, I use so much of them. Look, it's already, for me, it's a lot. For me, it's like very used fragrance. Sometimes I have a fragrance for a year and I don't use that much. And this is only a few months. Love this fragrance. My first buy from this brand, very special. Another beautiful, beautiful citrusy fragrance is Cedra, Cedra Intense. This is incredible citruses. I would say it's a lemon peel with a little bit of spices, with something green, maybe some green leaves too. And I feel like lavender or something because, you know, um, at first it's very, very citrusy. It's like a burst. It's like a boom of citruses in your face. And then when it comes down, it becomes, it reminds me um, a classic cologne. A classic cologne that we've been using for hundreds of years. And this is where it leads, but it's more long lasting. And usually when you have e, like e de yuzu, it means that it's a, a lighter formula that it maybe won't stay so long in your skin. Um, but intense versions of fragrances are e de parfum. So this will stay longer. And this one is pretty long lasting. Another freshie from the brand. I never really talk about fresh fragrances, but now you see it's something is happening to me. This is Le Mixed. And guys, this is just incredible. Um, I want to take showers of this. I look how much I used. 
Like I never used so much of anything in this short period of time. It's insane. I'm gonna go through this bottle very soon. So this is bergamot. This is grapefruit. This is hay, maybe. Uh, different herbs. It's very, very green and it has this light hay sweetness and it's very round. It's very pleasant, very easy to wear. People ask me about this. Sometimes, even when I'm sure that it doesn't smell anymore because it's been a couple hours, people start complimenting me. It's just incredible. I like it a lot and I highly recommend for the summer. For refresh, I just literally take showers <laughs> of this and it's not annoying, it's not cloying, it's not, um, it's not anything too much. It's very elegant and in general fragrances by this house, they're extremely elegant. They also work very good as uh, fragrances that you use when you don't know what to wear because they're not demanding. They don't demand a special mood or special outfit or whatever else. It's just something that you can just spray and be happy. That's I really like it about this brand. Another fragrance I wanted to mention, I already used a sample. I had a little decant of it. It's uh, Le Dete, uh, Summer Water. It smells like you're drinking Coke by the pool. So there is that smell. It's how the uh, swimming pool smells plus the Coke. And it's really summery and it's very unusual. Uh, if it sounds fun to you, I recommend to try. It's actually good and I'm thinking of getting that one too for next summer because now the summer is over so I'm not really buying um, fragrances of this profile, of lighter profile, but maybe next summer I'm going to get that one. Let's move to the part of my collected fragrances that maybe um, is more meat season or warm season. Uh, I would start with Patchouli Intense. To me, this is a very unique kind of patchouli because there is a contrast of warmth and cold. I think lavender is the cold element here, but there is also amber. Patchouli is somewhere in the middle, but amber and a little bit of vanilla and spices. Something like cinnamon or nutmeg, there is something spicy about it. So when you wear this fragrance, it constantly moves from hot to cold, from hot to cold, and I really like it. It's it's playing in the wind, and uh, I like wearing it a lot, especially now it's fall. Uh, I get these different whiffs of uh, hot and cold all the time, and I like it a lot. Now let's talk about Pierre Cuba. A very interesting and unique tobacco. You know, tobacco sometimes it's a note that is just there. It's there for many hours and you cannot really get rid of it even when you're tired of it. And this one is not like this at all. This is very elegant and soft. There is licorice, star anise, lavender, maybe a little bit of vanilla. But uh, Nicolai's vanilla is always very elegant. It's never the vanilla that you cook with. It's the real vanilla bean kind of smell. And yeah, I smell a lot of hay here and licorice. So tobacco is very soft here. It's very easy to wear. Even if you're afraid of tobacco, um, I don't think you would be afraid of this fragrance. It's really nice. Uh, it's also the intense. So it's a de parfum version. Most of these are the kind of fragrance that you can forget about because they sit close to the skin um, relatively. I cannot say that you don't smell them or no one will smell it from you, but uh, they are still pretty delicate and non-invasive, you know? So if you like something very strong, something that everybody knows, like Tiziana Terenzi or something like this, maybe this wouldn't be your profile, but also why not? Like I sometimes I like the monster fragrances that open the door in front of me. And sometimes I want something like this, something um, easy and elegant and um, just not as in your face. Now let's move to another interesting fragrance. It's Caravan Serai Intense. And this is a very realistic coffee with cardamom. There are also some uh, berries and fruits. I think plum is mentioned. Maybe a little of ember and patchouli, but mostly coffee. Um, and Caravanserai means the place where uh, nomads and travelers in the Middle East can stop uh, for the rest and having some coffee. So it's kind of a 
tavern place, something like that, maybe a hotel even. And I guess they actually went there to have some coffee. It also smells like bags of spices. It smells like a room where they're making coffee. Um, and, but there are also the bags with coffee beans, the, uh, the bags with spices, like big ones around. And yeah, it's very nice. And I remember I smiled the first time I tried it. Um, love this fragrance. Need a bigger bottle, but I need bigger bottles of everything here. So you understand. Next fragrance in a bottle is, uh, Maharani Intense. And this is a spice balm with citruses. So what I smell here is sweet candied orange, spices like cinnamon, maybe a little bit of amber uh, down there, and wood. They're not very, very strong here. I cannot say that I smell them a lot. I just wore this fragrance several times, and I really try to understand what's there. Because, you know, um, Patricia's way of creating the fragrance it seems like light touches it's not like a big like this you know it seems like everything is very light and her hand is very light like i this is how i would describe it so far i haven't seen a fragrance by this house that is very direct that is like okay i smell like grapefruit or i smell like this like that no it's like light touches of different things that just give different nuances and when they open up they change a lot too many of those change a lot when they open up and uh sometimes surprisingly in a good way i get good surprises from this brand and here too it's hard to say oh it smells like this and this and this no it's something in between and now it smells a little powdery to me too just slightly so I cannot wait to wear this fragrance in winter. I think um, it has this winter vibe. I want to smell it in cold weather. I think it's going to be really, really nice. Um, next fragrance is Amber Kashmir. It's written in the English way. So I'm not really sure because the word is written in English. So it's like Amber Kashmir, Kashmir. I'm not really sure. Tell me if you know. Uh, also intense, uh, the parfum. And this is the cashmere sweater. That's definitely a cashmere sweater. But what I didn't expect here, again, uh, I just mentioned that sometimes they open surprisingly. I never saw a fragrance where amber is next to iris. To me, personally, it's something new. And I didn't expect that first... It's going to be very soft, very gentle, airy amber. Uh, because sometimes I get tired of very heavy embers. I cannot really wear them. I used to like them a lot a few years ago. But I feel like I just had them so much that it just started to suffocate me. And this is a very light amber. But with time, when it dry down, it transforms into a very, very nice iris and violet. And here's where it's interesting because I definitely didn't expect that <laughs> transformation. And the iris part is very powdery. It's a little bit sweet. It's like floral powder, uh, also like a cloud around you. And it actually smells a lot like a cashmere sweater, like a very nice quality sweater that is so soft that you cannot believe it. Yeah, um, very elegant, very cozy. Um, this one is pretty feminine. All of these fragrances are unisex. This one I see more on women. Um, because I don't know, there's something nurturing, some like female energy about this fragrance that I feel amazing. Really, really nice. Surprisingly interesting and unique ember for me. The last fragrance for today is, uh, Musk Intense. Musk Intense. Um, amazing musky fragrance in the beginning it smells like a rose and a pear on the dry down it transforms into a very clean musk uh, some people say that uh, her fragrances are animalic i don't smell that i cannot really understand why people say that it's very animalic it's not really to me i don't smell that to me it's clean musks maybe i could assume just a little bit just a little bit but not much 
And yeah, after it's a pear and a rose, it's like a cloud. It's so fluffy. It's like somebody dropped the powder, you know, and the whole room, it's like started feeling with this white powder. So it has this effect too. Uh, soon it transforms into more of a um, jasmine and sandalwood and musk. Musk is still there. It has this fluffiness. It's a very, very fluffy, soft musk. Yeah. A very interesting transformation too. Uh, to me, it does change a lot. And the rose that I mentioned here, it's more of a white rose. It's very gentle, very delicate. Um, truly beautiful. I forgot to mention another fragrance that is uh, Vani Tonka. Uh, I also have a decant and I want a bottle of it, to be honest. Uh, maybe for this winter, I should get it. Um, it's a very nice vanilla with Tonka beans incenses and spices so at first it's peppery uh the like peppery vanilla then it moves into something like um vanilla with incenses and maybe some wood like down there but i don't smell the wood is also so delicate i use the word delicate a lot because it's just as it is uh very delicate wood also a very, very nice fragrance. I don't show it to you because it's not interesting. Just a little glass decant. So yes, that's what I have. Tell me if you have any fragrances by Nikolai. Uh, how do you like them? Maybe there's something you're curious about. And let's just discuss this brand. I think it's beautiful and I hope that you learned something today from me. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Check out my other videos and see you soon. Bye-bye.